Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands, I'm Pete, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of work on this Apex here. Now, this is an 07 uh, Apex, you know, Yamaha reliability, we love them, they're great trail riders, all that stuff, but there is one downside to these things, and uh, oil changes aren't the simplest on them, you know, I did a uh, video on doing oil change there on D-Ron's new Sidewinder in the background there, actually, uh, <laughs> it's back in here, we had to fix the suspension after his trip there to Quebec, but... Uh, She's all fixed up now. Um, they're not too bad to do an oil change on that with the Yamaha motor and that cat chassis, but these Apexes, you know, <laughs> yeah, to get down and dirty and do an oil change on this, you know, you gotta <laughs> prepare like you're going streaking. You gotta strip it right down to nothing. So, uh, you know, what? We're, we are doing a full preseason on this thing, you know, throwing some sliders in it and some wheel bearings, mm -hmm. all that kind of jazz. But uh, I don't really want to focus too much on the rest of the preseason stuff in this video. This is just going to be like uh, how to change the oil in your freaking Apex because, you know, a lot of guys switch over to the four-stroke side of it, you know, and they go to the Apex because they're reliable. But if you're a handy fella and you want to do your own maintenance and oil change, you're going to look at this thing and be like, Jesus, you got to do all this to do an oil change? Yeah, you do. But uh, the problem is, you know, the oil filter is buried down underneath the uh, intake box there, the battery tray and the battery's got to come out, all that jazz. You got to pull one side panel off, drain the oil tank. There's a panel underneath you got to undo. So <laughs> pack a lunch, grab a cold one. Let's dig into the oil change on the Apex. All right, so before we totally start digging into this sweetheart, she was sitting outside and it was a little bit cold. So before doing the oil change, gonna fire her up. Just let it warm up so that way all the oil will be nice and happy and thin and drain out no problem. This thing here hopefully should fire up no problem. What do we got? 21,000 on her. Ho oh, ho, that's a good reliable Yamaha right there. Dude, listen to that sound. There we go, we'll let her warm up a little bit and then uh, shut her down to change the oil. Anytime you fire these Apexes up, you got that red light, that's your temp light. Never shut it off until that light goes off. It went off there, so we are good to go. You know, if it's cold out and you fire this thing up, you let it run and then shut it off before that light goes out, you run the risk of fouling your plugs and then you'll go on a trip, go somewhere, crank, 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 no freaking go. So uh, let her warm up before you shut her off. So, you know, we're going to be digging into this. Now, there is quite a few things you need <laughs> on hand when you're going to go do an oil change on an Apex, you know, aside from just having patience. <laughs> You're going to need some uh, metric Allen keys, you know, 5 mil for sure for all these little fasteners here. An assortment of uh, metric sockets, 10 mil, 12 mil, 14 mil, same thing uh, with some ratchets and wrenches and all that. One of the bigger headed uh, Phillips screwdrivers, I forget what number that is. And uh, of course, oh yeah, that's for later. <laughs> right, so these Apexes aren't too bad to get apart. They got these Zeus fasteners here on the hood panel and the side panels now, I think. I'm not sure if Yamaha's the first one that came out with these style of fasteners, but you don't want to lose them because to replace those from the dealer, they're fairly, they're like Bambi, they're pretty dear. How much are they, Deron? $32. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so don't chuck them around and lose them because, uh, <laughs> you know, just two of those clips, that's a 30 pack of beer. Uh -huh. And you just undo those two and then the top hood panel just kind of slides off and forward. And then same thing on the side panel. You got a couple of these. This one's missing one down there. So typical. He probably just didn't want to spend the $32. Pull that sucker off. And oh, look at all this business end stuff here. There's your oil tank. Now it's got a, there is a little drain bolt on the bottom side down in here. But this is same as the winder like D-Ron's there that I showed you. There is a panel underneath that you got to unbolt and access a drain as well. And then uh, for these things here, because they're four-stroke, uh, there is no pull start on these. So, and the battery is buried up under the intake there. Uh, so we got to pull all that out. We got to get the battery and the tray and everything out because the oil filter's all underneath those. But if these things ever go dead on you, you can't get at the battery. They give you these two little power leads and your negative lead right there. So you just pull it out. Poke out the little terminal there, and you can hook your booster pack onto there. So, at least they were thinking, you know, that's mighty nice of them. Same thing on this side, Zeus fasteners. Oh, yeah, that one fell right out. This one's falling right out. There we go. You can see a little mark on the plastic there. That's where there's, like, a little pin in there. So, when you pull the panel off, you 
can see that there goes up and hooks into that. So that's all that holds it in up there. <laughs> Not only did he lose a couple of his Zeus fasters, he must have lost the uh, the pin. There should be just one solid pin that holds this guy on. He's got two of these little R clip style ones. Nice one. Might as well just have a peekaboo at the belt while we're in here too. Oh, what do we got here? A Deco belt? Pah. Freaking Deco belt. We're Ultimax fans over here. Like that's like showing up over here and smacking my mama. <laughs> Not only is it a Deco on there. Yeah, look at the arrows. <laughs> she set up to dangle backwards. Oh, it's better in <laughs> you don't know which way they go. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not le letting it leave with uh, that Deco on there. Get out of here. I don't have an Ultimax belt on hand that'll fit this one here, but uh, I don't know if you remember those old State Farm commercials there, you know. They, they had the jingle, like, a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and then poof, you know, agent shows up and you got insurance. So let's try something. <laughs> Rub it for luck. <laughs> we want to run to the max, and his belt is whack. That'll make her dangle. <laughs> See, <laughs> it works. It does not just on TV, eh? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Take her to the max, eh? With well, that XS 805, the skis to the sky. <laughs> We're gonna send this over the shoulder here. Get out of here with that. <laughs> Deco. Deco. See ya, gone. <laughs> oh, that's right. We're gonna take good care of you now. You wanna go to the max? There you go. Oh, you're gonna dangle like a big boy now. First things first, gonna grab my five mil Allen key on ratchet. I'm gonna hit all these little guys holding this little balance panel. I don't know what you call it. They're just kind of like those Zeus fasteners. They only do like a quarter turn or something like that. And that frees up that fella. So that's unhooked from the headlight there. And switching over, I got my quarter inch driver that I can put on my gun with a 10 mil socket on there. And then down under here, we got uh, 10 mil bolts that bolt the headlight assembly in. Oh yeah, broke it. Looks like we're gonna be fixing that one. What's the odds? 50 50? Ah, oh, they usually break. Oh, oh got oh, one oh, good yeah. one. <laughs> Common problem with these freaking things. Uh, and then you got just this rubber gasket that clips to the airbox there. Pull it off. Pop the lid off of the airbox here. String clips. Slide this over. We got two plugs. Oh, come on. There we go. This one, you gotta lift a little tab. And there's your headlight assembly. It's got these two little pockets that slide into here. So you gotta just slide it forward and off. And then apparently <laughs> we gotta do something with that because the rest of it's still sitting in there. <laughs> <laughs> Got all the clips off the airbox. Look at all the fanciness up in here. There's your <laughs> air filter screen, all that. Not too, too bad looking in here. And then we gotta get this bottom part off. Down in here, they're all, they got the rubber clamps going to the uh, throttle bodies. They are a four mil Allen key. So, gotta get down in there. Back them off. This one's not cooperating. Nice one. So this one is uh, <laughs> not playing nice. <laughs> Unplug this air sensor there. See if we can pop that guy off. Oh, I don't even know if it was even on. All right. Well, under here, there's a drain tube too. Pull that off. Then you got this guy here. That's for your idle circuit there. And pull that box out there. So as you can see, to get at your battery, it's under all that. Oil filter is down under here, so we gotta move all this. You've got, uh, what is it, 12 mil bolt in here and in here. There's two more down in here. A couple of 10 mil bolts on the bracket. We gotta get the cover off the battery. 
pull that out, tickety boo, have a beer, Darren. Jeez. Oh yeah, this is, <laughs> these ones are nice. You've done this a few <laughs> times on yours, eh? Yes. Forty-five thousand kilometers on yours. It's seen mm -hmm. an oil changer too. He's a few. <laughs> <laughs> So it just has the rubber strap, holds this cover on, tip it forward, pull it off. Oh, oh, it's got the nice little isolator in there. Undo the negative. Remember how many wires or what wires are going to it. This one's only got the two, so that ain't too bad. We'll put that back in there so we don't lose it. Those are all out, so then we can pull our battery out, put it off to the side. And then you can kind of see the filter down in there, eh? Can you get the light on it? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. It's still... Uh, it's down there, trust yes. me. <laughs> so we've got a uh, couple of bolts right here we got to undo uh, for this tray and then those ones there. So I'm just going to undo this bracket down here. Two 10 mils on that. Just undoing that because it's bolted to the brace for the battery. So and then swap over to a 12 mil. Pull it. Oh, damn. Jeez, that's tight. Oh, that's rattling my fillings. All right, let's crack these ones. <laughs> All right, we got that one. It's just hiding behind the harness there. Same thing with this one. I'm gonna have to use the old manual. <laughs> Ratchet for that fella. Oh, yeah. There we go. And switch over. Gotta love the Dewalt cordless impact drivers, eh? Nice. Oh yes. So now the sucker's loose, dangling. Nice one. The uh, your starter solenoid thing is all kind of looped on there. It's got little rubber grommet. So we're just gonna work this fella off of here. He's a bit of a schnozzle. Oh, look at that. Little Green little death lasting. down in there. Yep. Oh, we're going to have to uh, probably Green. replace that. These things are known for this. You'll get in there and you'll hit the key. You'll get nothing. It won't crank or you'll have a no start, whatever. It'll be the inside of here is all corroded. Yep. This is the first place you go. If you got an apex with a no start, <laughs> go to that fella right there. Jeez, it's too bad you've already been to Blackstock today. Yeah, I know, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I might have one of those. So then there's your battery tray out. Voila! There it is. Oil filter. <laughs> it's like Waldo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Found you, sucker. Found him. D-Ron thinks he's got one in his Apex as a backup, so we might have to borrow that off our buddy. We got to drain that tank, but... You got this foam all inside this panel here and you don't want to just drop it into there. It's the angle of it. I could try and make a little funnel to go up, but I mean, it's just screwed on with the Phillips screws. So get in there, pop these suckers all out. There's only a few of them. One there, then you got one here, one up in there, one over here, and then I think there's supposed to be one over here, but I think she lost it. She's gone. She's gone. So we'll get those all out, and then we'll be able to drain the tank. Yeah, these were coming out pretty good, eh, D-Ron? Mm, yeah, I know. <laughs> Yours didn't come out that good, did they? No. Cool. Well, where did I just from? Oh, that's the extra. <laughs> $32. <laughs> we're making money. Yeah. Let's throw those in the ski. So now you got a straight shot from that drain bolt down in there. You're not filling the belly pan or this foam soaked with oil so you know most apex owners that i've seen are fairly particular fellas <laughs> so it's a good way of doing it to keep your machine clean so now we just got to get a drain pan we'll drain that out pop the bolt back in and then we'll get that bottom panel off and drain the motor out so this has the bottom panel just like d-ron sidewinder except this has little allen key bolts holding them in <laughs> They're five mil. She's use a plastic little panel. It's got more bolts holding it in. That's one thing about Yamaha. The quality, the attention to detail. That's another reason why they're so heavy too though. 
They got a lot more extra bolts than all the other manufacturers put in theirs. That's true. There's another Allen uh, bolt there, drain plug for the motor. We got to pop that out. I'm not sure what size that is. It's probably a six mil or... I'll go find one. We got our six mil uh, Allen key here. Get up in there. Oh my gosh, she tight. And that way you gotta drain the the engine and the tank, Darren. Ah. <laughs> Why don't we do the tank? <laughs> this is how you get all the oil out of there. I'm getting lazy. <laughs> so that's the drain bolt for the motor. You get a new, if you get an oil change kit from the dealer, we did for Blackstock Motorsports there. So the drain or the oil kits come with new copper crush washers and you get a pair of gloves and you get an oil filter and you get a paper funnel and you get a hundred dollars worth of oil. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll find that drain or the crush washer and we'll put that plug back in. This here is the Yamalube oil change kit that we got from Blackstock Motorsports. Comes with your good Yamalube synthetic blend 0W30. You only get three liters of it. There's our oil filter. There's our copper crush washers. And then, <laughs> no glove, no love, d -Mon. That's it. <laughs> Take those to go back with you. Yeah. There's two different sizes here. That one's, I believe, for the oil tank, maybe. And then this one's for the drain plug underneath. Let's go figure it out here. Boom, shakalaka. Let's put her back in. She's done drip doodling. Push that out of the way so we don't drop her in there. Nothing worse than <laughs> going bobbing for sockets yeah. in an oil pan. Crush that washer. Tickety boo. Throw this panel back in there. We can go back up to the top. Put the drain bolt back in the motor, bolted that panel off, and then up here you've got your oil sensor. Oh, crap, that sucker. Loosen out of there. That's your dipstick and sensor all in one. Pretty handy. So we'll leave that like so. We'll come under here to this bolt. It's 12 mil. Crack the sucker loose. Just like so. Get rid of that copper crush washer. Grab this one. She's done draining. We got the new crush washer on there. So just stick that same thing. Move that out of the way. Oily fingers equals slippery. Drop it in there. And I freaking hate when that happens. Support the tank a little bit and crush that washer. These things are known, they crack down along here. These things, they wobble and flop around. So this one looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, we're good, we're golden, I guess. We can put the side panel back on and fill her up with oil. Although, while we're in here, pretty simple to check this guy. Not bad, not bad, a little bit dirty. We'll probably service that too, but remember, this video is just about an oil change. <laughs> all right, all right, well maybe we are right here. The chain case is easy accessible and we are doing a preseason, so we'll throw the, the service on this too. We're not gonna pull it apart or nothing. I'm just gonna pull the dipstick out. And then on these guys, the chain case, on the back side, there's a 12 mil bolt with a copper crush washer on there. Crack that sucker loose. Yeah, I think I'm gonna drop the freaking washer in that pan here. Hold on. <laughs> Deep. That's what she said. <laughs> there we go. We'll let that drain out. We'll put some fresh stuff in there. And then in the meantime, we'll come up here. Crack this jam nut loose for the tensioner. Back her off a little bit. And then we'll see. Oh yeah, look at that. A little bit of slack on there. See how I can just move that sucker. We'll just get that 
Snugged up finger tape. Longer back down. Boom! Let that drain, then we'll fill the engine oil and the chain case. Just gonna jam a rag down in there to catch some of the oil. It's gonna come off. Grab my filter pliers. Oh, she's on there good. Holy, so much for hand tight. I never been changed for a while, right? It is a Yamaha filter up in there. <laughs> Spin that sucker off. Nice one. Perfecto, new one's already got a little bit of, I don't know if it's Vaseline or something on there. Spin her on. Grab a rag, cause my hands are slippery. Hand tight, just like so. Pull the rag up out of there. D-Ron had this spare one, but the plug style is totally different than this one. So we're gonna pop her off. Have a look, we might have to run back to Blackstock to grab one of these fellas. Just two eight mil headed bolts, bolting your power wire on. And then this one just bridges. Your main power comes to here, and then you got your other bridge going to your starter. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. That was never off. That's never <laughs> been off. That was testing the main hands there. And then this plug. Oh, yeah, wait till you see this. <laughs> Look at that. That's the green death right there. Mm -hmm. That's, oh. a, <laughs> That's yeah. a way different plug than... Totally different. <laughs> see, see that one there? Mm -hmm. Not so much, eh? No. So, yeah, hopefully. I imagine Blackstock has these in stock, but oh, yeah. we'll give them a call. Chain case is done dripping, so D-Ron's gonna go get the new solenoid there. So while he's out and about, we're gonna pop this bolt back up in here. Oh, and then we can just throw this panel back on here. We're gonna put the screws away in here. All right, side panel's back on there, so we might as well throw a couple liters in the oil tank here. Why not use the paper funnel they give you? I mean, hey, waste not, want not, right? We'll dump two liters in here, then we'll let it uh, sit. That'll give it time to drain into the motor, and then we'll do some other stuff while we're waiting. D-Ron's got to go get that part anyway. Maybe I'll fix up, uh, try and repair his headlight, I guess, and then uh, <laughs> I might sneak a beer in while D-Ron will go. One. Ah, ah, ah. Two. Ah, ah, ah. I'll say the paper funnel actually works pretty good. Once we button her all up, we'll double check it. I don't think it's gonna take the whole three liters, but it might, I don't know, but uh, we'll let it drain in the motor here for now. We'll do the other stuff, and then uh, we'll add a little bit more if we need it. Pull that dipstick out of there. This one's a little trickier to fill because it's way down there. I take a long reach funnel, sneak it in behind, uh, the coolant hose that'll wedge it in there and then I think it holds like 200 or 250 or something you might want to double check the capacity there but we got some good 8090 Klondike from my buddy Jamie over at Iron Equipment so we'll fill some of that in there the beauty part about these ones here is if you end up putting a little bit too much in it's got a drain bolt so you can drain her down so let her drink that up jack her Oh, and would you look at that? Like, just look at it. Stupid thing doesn't want to focus. So you got your dipstick. You can see it looks like it's low there. It's got the standard chain case with the fill level there. And we're just, just on the tip. But if you flip the dipstick over, oh, what do we got? We got reverse and your little arrows come out down at the bottom. So we are on the tip just in the reverse. You would think they'd want more oil in reverse. I don't know. Kind of arse backwards to me, but we're going with the dipstick. 
So while we're waiting for Deron to come back, we will put the battery tray back in. We can get the solenoid hooked back up afterwards. So we'll just get the sucker dropped back down in here. There we go. Takes a little bit of wiggling around till you find her, but you know, it really does suck when you drop one of these bolts down in here. So we'll try not to do that. I like to get them all started before I go ahead and crank them all tight. Tighten these bottom ones first. And these guys. Switch over to the tent mill. Bolt this bracket back down. Tip. Giddy-boo. Now, the headlight here, uh, obviously this thing's all buggered up. It's busted out of here. It's supposed to look like that where the clip drops over top and then you can bolt into it. So what I did is uh, it still has the two side grooves that'll hold the clip. So we could slide that fella back down in there. And then I took a piece of sheet metal Bent it so it wraps around there, like so. Drill the hole straight through. So then I can slip this guy over top, and then I've got a, uh, uh, come here, you. Then I may just cut a piece of aluminum sleeve there that's actually part of the original bar at <laughs> D-Ron's uh, suspension there. Just to work as a collar so I can put it in there so when I tighten the bolt up, it doesn't totally crush the plastic bezel there and then that way that'll stiffen that up and it'll lock that clip in there so then i can come through with the original bolt and bolt the headlight back in so let's uh let's give that a go tickety, tickety, tickety -boo. so all we got to do that clips in there i'm going to put the bolt i'm going to be using in there so everything stays lined up put this guy over top here put the bolt through with my collar. Just let's line her up. And that, just like so. And I got a nylock nut on here, just so she won't vibrate loose or nothing. So that there is going to keep that squeeze tight so we've got our mount point back. I know it doesn't have the part going across there for that uh, clip to actually lock into like this side here because they do drop over top and that way they can't come off when the bolt's in there. But I mean the way that the headlight goes in it locks into there and then it just has these uh, mount points to keep it. We just want to stop it from flopping around right so I mean it's <laughs> otherwise you got to replace that whole headlight assembly in this way, ah, she'll be good. She's good for another rep. All right, chain case is set. The uh, battery trace back in. Uh, grab a beer and wait. And, uh, <laughs> wait for D-Ron. Although I think I just heard him pull in. <laughs> D-Ron, <laughs> you're looking good. Do you switch to light beer? <laughs> I did my hair. <laughs> <laughs> we got a solenoid though. Look at that. Thanks, baby. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding, D-Ron. <laughs> but now my baby's here. Yeah. Good to see you, sweetie. Yeah, good to see you too. <laughs> Gorgeous. What'd you bring me? I brought you a solenoid. <laughs> <laughs> a solenoid? Solenoid? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now, you gonna put it in? For sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Yeah>. Perfect. <laughs> so before I go and put the new solenoid in, I'm going to take this uh, electric contact cleaner and we're going to spray it up inside this plug here because it was full of the green death. So we're going to let that soak, get that stuff off of there before we plug it in. Right, baby? I mean, I was close. Yeah, you're yeah. close. It goes in this vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. 
request you go put it in there. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> if you want, right? Right? Whatever. So we got to get, it's got this little rubber saddle thing that you've got to slide over. These aluminum tabs here, which, oh, let's shed a little light on the situation. There There's that one. This one, not so much. There we go. So that sucker fits there. And then, good old dielectric grease, now that we've cleaned out the contacts of that plug. Oh, yeah. And then, we got to put these fellas on. Where's my bolts? This one's a little bit of a bugger because it's got... This is the lead that goes to the battery, and then halfway up, it's got another ring terminal. That's the one that goes to the solenoid here. We gotta put this fuse back on there. That's your main fuse. Come on. I can't find the hole, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not being dirty, I actually couldn't find the hole. <laughs> okay, we got her in there, so we'll take both of these suckers up. Ah, like so. Cover these up, we don't want anything to be able to drop down in here and cross those two, otherwise your starter's gonna be just a zinging away. And you won't be able to get it to stop. Tickety boo. And then we plug this fellow in. Just like so. And that's how I would have done it too, so. Exactly, right? Okay, yeah. Which is great. <laughs> <laughs> now we will drop the battery back in, and it's a bit of a a puzzle with these foam pieces here, but I'm thinking. I don't actually remember how this went, but I'm thinking it went something like that. I think this is supposed to be glued together so it isolates it or whatever, but then we should be able to put the terminals on and then slide that fella over top. I'll grab my Phillips. We'll put the positive one on first. Oh, wait. I almost forgot. I have these wires on there too. There we go. Like so. Oh, yeah. Nice and tight. And this fella. I'm just going to tip the battery forward. Slide that down over top. Put its little safety belt on. And just like tying down a load, give it a flick. That ain't going anywhere. All right, gorgeous. We're in the home stretch. We gotta pop this uh, fella back on. I cracked this one loose. This is the one that wouldn't undo. So they just kind of seize up a little bit. They're kind of tight. And when you go to loosen them and they're seized, it bends these all to uh, heck. So I got it off, straightened it out, put it back on. These can only go on one way. They got a little notch in there. There's a corresponding groove on those boots so they all key and locate in the same direction when they're on that way you can actually get through and tighten them up so we got to pop it on now you got to kind of line them up there's a hose here on the bottom too you got to line up at the same time get it on get it started get this one started good job good job get it started and then if i can see down in here oh and the front too there's a little vent hose way down in here i'm gonna pop that on there too don't be getting my butt cracked either <laughs> like we got her looks fantastic yeah, it looks like they're all seated down to where they need to be. Yep, we're golden. Okay, tighten them all up. 
That one. That one. <laughs> there we go. She's all buttoned down. I got the little drain hose there. There's the sensors plugged in. Both of those hoses are on. Got the screen down in here. That hose has got to go on there. So. That hose clips. A little rubber pulled down. And then we can put the headlight assembly that we prepared back on. Plug everything in first. That one. A little green one. Line it up. I think that's it. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> setup. <laughs> right? There. We got her. <laughs> the rubbers. That place. There we go. Tickety-boo. <laughs> this is my homemade tab. We're just gonna get that started. This is the side I had to repair on here, so. Toy! We're getting her! This guy back in here. Oh, of course, this one doesn't want to line up. <laughs> oh, you bugger. Uh -oh. <laughs> I got the tab over top of the one. I got yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this tab here. I got the headlight freaking tucked underneath. It's supposed to be over top. So. So I just undid that, pulled it out, so now that's all fitting how it's supposed to be. Bit of a jigsaw puzzle. We are at the point where we can fire it, let it run for a little bit, and then we'll double check the oil. One more time, we'll check the dipstick. I hate these freaking plastic oil dipstick. If you, if you cross thread it at all, you're done. <laughs> oh yeah, she needs some, it's not even, not even on the dipstick. Where's my paper phone? <laughs> We're just under the low mark, so she needs a bit more. Maybe we'll take all three. And they give you three, so they must take three. <laughs> I mean, it's just a tiny little bit in there. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Bingo, bango. We are just at. Just at the high mark there. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe you can see the shine on there. Mm. Maybe not. Being blurry. <laughs> We're good. Hmm. We'll believe you. Plug the oil sensor back in. And that is that. We just gotta put the side panels back on. And then we'll carry on with the rest of the preseason, putting the sliders and all that in. But that right there is an oil change on an apex and a solenoid. And fixing the headlight bracket. <laughs> little more than we originally were going to do for this video, but two little things that, you know, when you're in there doing an oil change, check that solenoid. If you see the green death in there, you're best to put one in there because you go to be like D-Ron, go to Quebec and have a breakdown, and then your trip's kind of spoiled unless you bring a second apex. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, well, there you go. You know, we've still got a little bit of work to do to this thing to finish off the preseason, but that is how you change the oil and the solenoid <laughs> and fix the headlight on an Apex. So uh, any of you fellows that uh, pick one of those up and you want to do it yourself, there you go. Hopefully this helps you. But, uh, you know, thanks to D-Ron running around getting the parts for this thing. You know, it was kind of stuck once we got into it and saw that that solenoid was all green death inside there. It's like there's no point in putting it back together until we get a new one. So, so those things you got to look out for on these things. Sometimes, you know, something comes up and you just got to stop, have a beer and rethink the situation. But uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, take her easy. Cheers.